am I supposed to look at like stuff that uh, he tried to fix? Because it said that uh, he was trying to cover some holes or such, you know. I don't see anything though. Nothing here. I can't do anything with this thing. Okay, does that wall look strange when you move? Look at that! It's moving with us. That's not normal. That's creepy. I don't see him trying to cover some stupid holes. And I can't ask him because I already. And when I do that, he. No. It just sucks. Let's go back to his house, I guess. Great, I just started and I'm already stuck, and this is not where I wanted to go. Thank god the loading screens aren't that all. No, okay, um. Where's your son? I can't do anything here. Books. Lots of books. Can't do anything with them. Great. Okay, so there's nothing. You really need to clean up your room. Oh god, don't tell me I'm going to have to ask her. Fine! A running generator in a poorly ventilated room. That might be all the evidence we need. <laughs> well, I can't get it in here. Right? Now I'm not gonna ask you again. I already feel stupid for asking you once. Can't we take the stupid generator with us? Take it with us. What? Oh! Huh, I found something. Nothing we need to collect there. Okay, no. Nothing we need okay, to collect yeah, okay, there. Yeah, okay, shut up. Um. No prints there. No shit. Uh, no casting either, I guess. Blood? No, what the hell is that? Human blood. Oh, it's blood. Nice find. We need to know how much carbon monoxide that generator puts out and how much gas it burns. Let's take it back to the garage for testing. <laughs> now you do it, do it. Damn it. Okay. Now I guess the body will be there as well. No. Okay. Nice. Let's go to the garage. Okay. We've got warning signs posted. We've got our oxygen masks, and we've covered half the garage with a giant plastic bag. The conditions inside the gas tent should closely mimic those in Andrew's practice space. And the carbon monoxide detector is positioned about where Andrew's head would have been relative to the generator. All we have to do is fire that puppy up and wait. We should get a good sense of how fast it burns gasoline and how much carbon monoxide it puts out. Care to do the honors? Okay. How do I turn this on? Okay, that's good. Now come back out here where it's safe. We're gonna let it run completely out of gas. It's gonna take a while, so we should come back later. I don't want to come back later. I want to see it now. Fine. Can we go to the morgue now? Where is the body? Get the sand body. It's gonna be a few hours before I have much to tell you. We'll leave you to it. So where to next? Okay, let's go back there. There's nothing here anymore. Except the creepy wall that follows me. Can't do anything here. <sighs> okay, fine. Fine. Someone left some blood on the generator and we oh, need to talk okay, to that someone. Yeah, of course. Why was I that stupid not to touch that? Come on. No, I'm wrong. It's this place. Oh god, this is not me. What? Yeah, I know. Why does Catherine always come with, like, these hints too late? Oh, no. That's not what I meant to do. 
Uh, yeah, I know what to do. No, this is one. Not, not it. Just next. to the big ones. Um. Confirm match. Who is it? The blood sample we took from the generator is a match to a Lyle Fitzer. Jeez, kid's 18 years old. Look at that list of priors. Talk about starting early and often. But how does Lyle Fitzer know? Wait a second. Lyle's home address matches the Levesque address. Lyle Fitzer is Andrew's stepson. And at some point, he left blood at our crime scene. We should hear what he has to say about his stepfather. Hey, Warren. Um... Yeah? What evidence do we have? His blood. We don't even know if there's been a crime yet, so there's no grounds for a warrant. But it won't hurt to ask him. Lyle, thanks for coming I in. I thank my mom. I wouldn't be here if she hadn't freaked out when I said I wasn't going. I'm sure it's a tough time for her, but we have to ask. We found your blood on a generator that may have caused your stepfather's death. How did it get there? A generator killed him? He didn't die of cancer? We think he may have been killed by generator. How did a generator kill him? Lyle, your mother said sometimes you would help Andrew practice his performance. But how would your blood get on the generator? I got in a fight at school, and I got suspended. Mom said I had to tell Andrew before the school called him. So, last night I went into his rehearsal room, and, and he didn't take it well. He liked to poke and push his punctuation. He'd yell, and then he'd poke, yell, then push. Last night, he pushed me so hard, I hit my head on the generator. Hurt like it. It hurt, okay? A lot. Pretty great guy, huh? Had Andrew ever hit you before? What do you think? But he'd only hit me when he was bored with beating Mom. It must have been very tough for both of you. I'm curious, did you ever think about... Look, I did not kill my stepdad. Believe me, I had every reason to, but I can restrain myself. Not like him. Well, I we're sorry for your loss. Whatever. I can go, right? Hi, Doc Robbins here. Just wanted to let you know that I've completed my autopsy of Andrew Levesque. I'll give you a full report when you come by. Okie dokie. Let's go then. So what killed him? Okay, first order of business. Got a COD. Carboxy hemoglobin saturation levels in your victim indicate that he was exposed to carbon monoxide in relation to ambient concentration of about 3,200 parts per million. Death would have occurred in about 30 minutes, but he would have experienced severe headaches, dizziness, and nausea after only five or 10. Who hangs around for half an hour feeling like that? Well, that's the other interesting wrinkle. While Mr. Levesque's exposure to carbon monoxide was at a lethal level, he was quite possibly already on his way out. Take a look here. His squamous cell carcinoma had spread to his lungs. It's like a friend of mine once remarked, his cancer had cancer. So he might not have felt much worse than he normally did. At least until he keeled over. Now it's even more important for us to finish our test with the generator. If it could have put out enough carbon monoxide, this might be just an accident. Did the dude medical records indicated his cancer had relapsed? No, no mention of it at all. But Mr. Levesque's last visit to the doctor was over six months ago. So obviously his cancer went unchecked and progressed rather aggressively. So there are no signs of cancer treatment? Well, I'm not sure. Look at what I found in his esophagus. This is a two-part hard gelatin capsule. I couldn't decipher a label, but it could be a cancer-killing pill, or it could be a vitamin supplement. Hey, okay, great. Um, what about time of death? We were set, so I'd say he's been dead for approximately four to five hours. Any problem with getting, thing, uh, getting prints in DNA? No problems at all. Here you are. Thank you. 
Bye bye. Okay, can I go now? Uh, did you come on your cruise of There's oh. a white substance on his wrist that I left for you. Okay. You always did know how to make us feel needed. Also, take a close look at his mouth, the area just around his lesions. Anything other than CO show up on a toxic There were report? small concentrations of alkane hydrocarbons in his system, paraffin. Not enough to initiate toxemia, however. Is there anything else? I think we've been fairly comprehensive. But if you think of more questions to ask me, I'll answer them if I can. Okay, let's look at his mouth, I guess he said. Am I supposed to do something with that? We'll have to verify it, but that looks like makeup to me. That shade's a little dark for him. Okay, anything else? Okay, here. More white goo. But is it the same white goo we found before? That's for us to find out. He's strange toes once again. I'm not gonna look at them. They creep me out. Okay, let's go down. Location. Lab. Okay, let's compare the goo. <laughs> I don't know, the goo, I said the goo. Uh, this goo with this goo is a match. The cock on the victim's wrist and the cock from the generator are chemically identical. Okay, um... Search. No, that's not it. Particulate talc and nylon, silicone oil, sodium hyaluronate, and water. Definitely makeup. Andrew may have been hiding his cancer. Hey. Uh, what else? So, oh, what's that? this out nope nope um no I can't get a clear match okay there it is it's a paraffin with those additives it's consistent with lamp oil that makes sense from what I've read lamp oil is the least toxic fuel for fire breathing it's still toxic, just not as bad as the alternatives. Okay, so we know that. He was drinking that. Um, okay, how am I supposed to test these? I can't put them in here, can I? Come on, close. No. Um, anything else? Oh, oh yeah, wait, no probably check out what it says or something now yeah I know yeah okay now I'm supposed to look for like maybe we'll have better luck with a different magnification okay if you say so okay is this sharp this is sharp What's this? Pharmaceutical companies print out some sort of ID number somewhere on the meds themselves. We should be able to look that up. Okay, one, two, five. And that is over here, I think. Like a database, evidence, yep, search. It's methotrexate, an anti-metabolite and antifolate drug used in the treatment of autoimmune diseases and cancer. Possible side effects include anemia, neutrophy, increased risk of bruising, nausea, and vomiting. Yeah, great. That sounds like a nice drug. Anything else? No, wrong button once again. Check it all out, I think. 